the first thing I want to talk about is obviously uh, I noticed on Twitter a lot of people were celebrating. And it turns out that a gentleman called Rush Limbaugh had died. I think I've said that correctly. Now, like most people in the UK, Rush Limbaugh had no effect on my life whatsoever. I was vaguely aware that he was some kind of conservative commentator and agitator and basically an old shock jock kind of dude said some horrible fucking shit and you know obviously it can only be a, taken in any other way if if they're not of a conservative persuasion but he did say some horrible things and allegedly once reveled in the deaths of gay people he didn't sound to me like a, a terribly nice man uh, if I'm honest but he did have a lot of followers a lot of listeners and he passed away and this is the man who said that smokers were no more at risk of cancer than people who ate carrots um rush limbo was a smoker and died of lung cancer uh, i i don't know whether he ate a lot of carrots or not i'm really not sure so i can't say what the carrots had to do with that but you know not a great guy maybe maybe just not a great dude the confusion for me comes in the celebrating of the death of a man who didn't really have much of an effect on your life beyond hurting your feelings, I guess. I'm sure some people will draw long and convoluted ways of how everything he said somehow played into some terrible things. But I've seen people from fucking Ireland celebrating this man's death. England, Madrid, you know, burning hell, you... Cunt, like from people that he couldn't possibly have had any effect on. Now I find this interesting because I I could understand if, if you know you were a, a German Jew and Hitler died, you'd be happy. If you're in Zimbabwe and Mugabe died, you'd be happy at least for ten minutes until the next fucking prick moved in. Yeah, you know, I get that. If your oppressor or your murderer has died, you know, or someone, sorry, a murderer of one of your loved ones, or your rapist, or something horrible died, there's an emotional, physical connection to you. I get it. I get it. But I went and looked through these people's profiles, just some of them for the purposes of my own amusement and edification. Many of them were very proud of being parents, thoughtful people intelligent people some of them had hashtag be kind in their profiles they were celebrating the death of a human being from cancer and i didn't understand this and i can't understand this because he's so many there's so many degrees of separation between this man and you this man who was a fucking commentator on the fucking radio like joy the world is a better place without him because he's a major problem or was really really come on really and it's what i find really odd is i don't see if if if, if something terrible happened to owen jones naturally you know people would shit post like crazy about that but i can't imagine the overwhelming conservative thing would be I'm so happy! You know, it wasn't even that when he was attacked and, and brutally bruised and grazed <laughs> by his ninja attacker. Um, so I, 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 I find this detestable. And this buys into this whole thing of, we're the good guys. We're the good guys, you know? So anyone we say are the bad guys, we can dehumanize. And when we dehumanize them, it doesn't matter what happens. They don't need to work, eat, or even breathe. The world is better without the good guys. Gina Carano spoke about this attitude. Canceled the fuck. Turns out she wouldn't apologize. Disney demanded she apologize. She wouldn't. Gina Carano. Graham. Oof, oof. You know what? I, I didn't have the heart to delete the pictures last week with her. <laughs> just just in case. <laughs> here we go, here we go. There we so go. I'm very confused about all these people that oh. think they're a better human being. I mean, someone even said to me, 
well, he celebrated the guess deaths of these gay people, so that's okay. We celebrate his. He's like, dude, emulating him is a good look for you. I'm not suggesting anyone should give a fuck. I just don't get this. I'm extremely happy sort of vibe of someone dying. Now, just to give you an idea of the sort of people who were enjoying the death of Rush Limbaugh, uh, Veronica Ivy. Veronica Ivy's an interesting person, uh, previously known as Rachel McKinnon. Um, Veronica is very glad Rush Limbaugh is dead because, you see, when a bad person goes, the world is a better place. Um, it's worth noting that Veronica Ivy also enjoyed greatly the death of Magdalene Burns. Um, Magdalene was a feminist and a lesbian, once called trans people blackface actors. She, she was very uncompromising and brutally honest. And um, interestingly, when Graham was looking for something about her earlier, on the Google search, less than one full page of results on DuckDuckGo. Many, many results. I wonder why that could be. Very confused. Can't imagine. For the life of me. But yeah, uh, Veronica Ivy was quite happy that this young woman died of a brain tumour. Because what could be better, right? Than bad people dying from painful diseases and painful ailments. So, bad people, evil people, and nasty people are better off gone. The world's a better place without Magdalene Burns, according to Veronica Ivy. It's funny because at one time I thought Magdalene Burns was actually quite harsh. Then I learned more. Not nearly harsh enough, but brutally honest. And you should go and check out her videos because she, she was very lucid and erudite on the whole topic. Definitely worth watching. But Veronica said, Mad Dylan was a bad person. Rush was a bad person. The world's better off without them. So, just to give us an idea, a rounded view, because it's important that we have a rounded view of things, who is Veronica Ivy? Well, Veronica Ivy was a very, very average male. A very average man who enjoyed cycling, but didn't win very much. Because kind of mediocre. You'll see a pattern in that sort of thing. However, after deciding that he was in fact a woman, despite having all the original equipment and being a, quite a stocky motherfucker, um, Rachel McKinnon, as was, decided to take up women's cycling and was far more successful. I can't imagine why. Um... So this is someone who enjoys beating women at cycling. Not beating women, I'm making no such accusations, by the way. Just beating them at cycling, at sports, and encouraging other trans people to do so. And interestingly enough, Veronica made a video for young trans kids who shouldn't have to be around families that are intolerant or don't understand them or other people. They should get in touch and join the Glitter family. The Glitter family, which I imagine means Veronica and the people around her and this other really weird androgynous motherfucker whose name I can't remember. The Glitter family. It's a bit of a problem there, though. Turns out the Glitter family was an unfortunate choice of name because uh, Veronica's roommate slash life partner, Danny Sean Doherty. Is he on the screen now? Oh, yes. He's a handsome motherfucker, isn't he? Mmm, hunk a hunk of burning love. Also charged with being a dirty, stinking, vile fucking pedo. That's who I'd like to introduce kids to. Here's the Glitter family. I'm Veronica. I'm nice. Here's my pedo life partner. I don't know that Veronica knew he was a pedo. I've got no idea. But isn't it unfortunate and fucking so such a letdown that once again, a high profile... Trans advocate who believes in fairies and gender woo has a pedo connection. Again, 
No insinuations, because I've seen no evidence that Veronica Ivy has done anything more wrong than be a horrible cunt. Okay, so no accusations there. The, the life partner, accusations there. Ooh, what a dirty, stinking, vile fucking pedo. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> fuck him. And fuck Veronica Ivy. And Rush Limbaugh, I didn't know enough about you to have much of an opinion.